All right, we're gonna get into one of the most interesting people in history. You know, we've been talking about these people who wanted to reform the Catholic Church. They didn't like the indulgences. They didn't want the Catholic Church um, straying away from what they believed was the fundamental principles of Christianity, the Bible, Jesus and his teachings, and, you know, following in the kindness and love of, of what was taught. So they felt that the church, the Catholic Church especially, had become way too political, way too involved with money and government. Now, Martin Luther, John Calvin, those other people we were reading about and learning about in the previous days were very altruistic, meaning very for the cause and for the love of the religion. Now, Henry VIII was a king, and he had, um, you know, some characteristics that made him want to not have to answer to other, other people. He was very kind of full of himself. He had um, some insecurities when it came to his physical appearance. And so he was kind of doing things to overcompensate for that a lot. So Henry VIII became king at a very, very young age, at age 17, after his father, Henry VII, died. Now, he technically shouldn't have been king. His brother was the second, because um, he was the second born, but his brother died um, earlier before his father even passed away. Um, so Henry decided he was going to marry his brother's wife because she was picked and groomed to be the king's wife, Catherine of Aragon. I know it seems weird, but in those time periods, who your wife was was very politically driven, uh, not as much for your you know, love and, and, and understanding of that person. Now, he was married to Catherine of Aragon for a very long time, um, but she couldn't give him a son. So she, he wanted uh, to get a divorce, which was at the time um, illegal in the Catholic Church. Uh, they wouldn't grant it. Uh, he wouldn't have been uh, considered, you know, being a heavenly man in the Catholic size or in his leadership position. Um, and the Pope told him no. So he says, well, I'm going to start my own religion that allows that. So he's going to really change the face of religion in one of the largest countries um, physically smallest country, but one of the larger controlling countries in Europe. So Henry VIII, for his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, he divorced. So again, was originally married to his brother. Um, Henry wants to divorce her since she was not producing an heir. They did have one daughter, Mary. Um, if you've ever heard the old kind of ghost story where you go into a, a bathroom and say, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, kind of like an old ghost story, um, that was referring to her. Uh, she was um, the, the child that was kind of, again, not accepted by her father. Um, and there were kind of stories of her kind of not being mentally stable. The Pope refuses to grant his wish and this angers Henry. So again, he declares himself head of his own new church, the Church of England, very similar to the Catholic Church, um, but allowing, again, divorces. So first wife is Catherine. Second wife is Queen Anne of Boleyn, because he, uh, once he was divorced, he married again. Anne of Boleyn, he actually beheaded. Uh, he marries her and has a daughter, Elizabeth. Um, but she has many pregnancies that don't end well. Um, he wants a son. And ironically, again, he doesn't allow Elizabeth to be um, a part of his life in any real form. Uh, he charges this wife with witchcraft, which if you charge someone with witchcraft, uh, there was only two ways of executing them, either burning or beheading. So he had her executed and beheaded because he thought two divorces may look bad for his reputation. Wife number three, Jane Seymour, he marries her just 10 days after uh, his previous wife was beheaded. She does give birth to a son, Edward. So he does, you know, love her deeply, but in his mind, because she, she gave him what he wanted, but she dies a few weeks later. We think it probably was complications to childbirth. Um, so this is his only true heir in his mind. So then he marries Anne of Cleves. Um, and he divorces her uh, because he said he did not find her attractive. Um, he never met the, her before their marriage. He called her the Flanders mare, which means horse face. So basically, once you see him, you'll 
be very concerned why he has such judgments on people's physical appearances, but he didn't think she was beautiful. So he divorces her as well. Okay. But he feels like Jane was his only true love because she gave him that son he desperately wanted. So Catherine Howard was wife number five. It was actually his second wife's first cousin. So uh, by marriage related to him, um, he hears she's seen other people. So he has her executed um, and beheaded for going against the king. Uh, wife six, Catherine Parr. She survives. Uh, she was recently widowed. Catherine does not want to marry Henry, but she feels like she has no other choice. He kind of did a good thing for their family. She brings um, his daughters into the relationship and starts to like raise them more as a family with Mary and Elizabeth and their son. Um, ironically, the um, one of the children that will be the most successful in when it comes to a monarchy is going to be Elizabeth. She's going to be one of the greatest queens uh, England has ever seen and the direct correlation to the Elizabeth that is now in power of England. Uh, and he marries her, um, but then he will die. Um, and then after she has kind of been ruling things and, and taking help with her children, his children, she is going to die of during childbirth after <clears throat> she was remarried after Henry's death. So again, she survived in a sense because Henry died before her. She did die of natural causes after Henry's death when she was remarried and having a child. So you can see quite the stud muffin here, right? Yes, he had an interesting life, but what did he do that started the Reformation movement and he, that started helping it continue into England? Even though it was 100% for selfish reasons, Henry defies the church, breaks away, and starts his own Protestant religion in England, being divorced, being the key difference. Here's some of his wives. Um, we have a lovely music video. It's one of our favorites. I think it's only second to... Uh, these on rats um, that summarizes his wives and things that happened. Uh, so there's a link there to watch that. Um, then you are going to go to the Google classroom after you watch that. And you're going to do an ed puzzle with this same, very same music video. So I want you to watch it first, just to kind of get the entirety of it. It is a little longer song. It was based on the ABBA song, uh, money, money, money. Uh, that also, if you've ever seen the Mamma Mia movies, it was in. Then you want to go to the classroom and complete the Ed Puzzle assignment associated with two. The Ed Puzzle assignment will be graded. All right, so one of the most interesting guys in history, not many people can say they've had that many wives. Not many can say that they beheaded several of them either. Uh, so Henry VIII makes one of our most interesting men in history. Uh, he was also one of our very large um, man, and we believe his death was directly related to you know, heart conditions and different kinds of diabetes symptoms. So he was someone who was so wanting this male heir to take his rule, greatly probably because he knew his life wouldn't be very long, but also that he wanted kind of his image in his mind to keep going on. And ironically, one of his daughters will be the one that rules the most successfully. All right, have a good day, guys. Miss ya.